Welcome to another video from explainingthefuture.com. This time I'm going to discuss cyborg fusion. This is the idea that decades from now human beings may physically merge with computers. Now of course this could have massive implications and so in this video I'm going to discuss how cyborg fusion may happen and what it may mean for the human race. To place cyborg fusion in context, let's look at a model that I call the five ages of computing. This charts computing history, past, present and future, with the first phase of early computing running until the late 1970s. During this period, computing was a complex, expensive and minority activity. However, all of this changed with the arrival of the personal computing age in which computing became a mainstream human pursuit. Next, the growth of the internet, followed by the rise of the smartphone and other wireless computing devices, delivered the network computing age. Today, this continues to be characterised by mass digital interconnection. This said, the network computing age is now coming to an end. Soon, we will enter the cognitive computing age, in which most computing devices will be able to possess or remotely access some form of artificial intelligence. In particular, over the next 20 years, AI will increasingly allow computers to attend to us, rather than people always having to attend to computers. In turn, attentive computing will allow humans to develop a much richer, more seamless relationship with smart technologies that will include interpersonal robots and autonomous vehicles. However, around 2040, I suspect that things will change again with the arrival of cyborg fusion. This will facilitate the most fluid and effective digital interface, with people enjoying direct access to computers and the internet. Cyborg fusion will depend on the development of brain-computer interfaces, or BCIs, which will provide a direct link between our brains and the digital realm. As I've recently discussed on my Explaining Computers channel, Current BCIs either place sensors and stimulate it on the outside of the head, or rely on electrode arrays that are implanted inside the skull. The latter are always likely to prove most effective. However, implants made from plastics and metals may be rejected by the body, and need to be fitted via a surgical procedure. For these reasons, I strongly suspect that future brain-computer interfaces will be organic. The human brain is, after all, an electrochemical computer, and hence the most suitable technology to interface with it is also likely to be biological. Given current developments in synthetic biology, by the 2040s it may well be possible to create organic brain implants which will rely on direct wetware-to-wetware -wetware connectivity, and which will be able to communicate wirelessly with inorganic computers. In time, I further predict that organic brain-computer interfaces will not need to be surgically implanted. Instead, future AIs will figure out how to genetically reprogram the human body to grow its own brain augmentations. We do, after all, already grow our own brains. So, with a genetic helping hand, there's no reason we should not be able to manufacture organic additions to our brains internally and without the need for implant surgery. Sometime in the 2050s, it may be possible for us to take a pill, or have an injection, or maybe inhale a chemical vapour that will cause us to ingest into our bodies the synthetic genetic material required to trigger an organic digital upgrade. Such material would cause us to grow new bodily organs, the brain implants, which would augment our mental capabilities, but which would also probably give us something like an organic Wi-Fi chip, so that we could communicate wirelessly with computers and the internet. Genetically augmenting the human body with a wireless brain coprocessor would clearly have fundamental implications. For a start, upgraded individuals would be able to interface their brain directly with cloud AI. They would also have permanent and immediate access to all of the human and AI knowledge available on the internet, as well as the ability to communicate wirelessly with any computer, robot, automobile or other digital technology. 
Enhanced individuals may even be able to communicate wirelessly with others who possess a similar brain augmentation. Such digital telepathy would open up all kinds of possibilities, including the development of group consciousness or a hive mind, as well as new forms of social media. Enhanced individuals may, for example, be able to share their experiences via a new web service called YouMind. Genetic brain augmentations may even be able to be passed on to a person's offspring. So, if two network-enhanced individuals have a child, their baby could be born with a live internet connection. Their new family member may even be digitally aware in the womb. He or she could therefore be programmed before birth to greet the world with the ability to speak, as much education as an infant brain could upload, and the following on Umind, Facebook and Twitter. In 1960, two academics called Manfred Klein and Nathan Klein published this paper in the journal Astronautics. And in this paper, they coined the word cyborg. They were the first people to talk about cyborgs. And they defined a cyborg as a person who decided to take a conscious part in their own biological evolution by adding artificial parts. Now, the idea in this paper, which as you might be able to see is called Cyborgs and Space, is that people would add to their bodies, they become cyborgs, in order to survive off-world in space. And I'm sure in time that will happen. As human beings are forced to leave the Earth in search of new resources, we will evolve ourselves. We will have different bodies as we go out off-planet than we do here today, because we become cyborgs. But having said that, and as I've discussed in this video, I am convinced that the first really sophisticated cyborgs would be people who have altered their bodies not to survive in space, but to excel in the online world of cyberspace. Anyway, that is now it for this video. If you've enjoyed what's here, you might want to check out my video on brain-computer interfaces and where we're developing today, which I've recently posted on my Explaining Computers channel. And if you want to know more about the future of computing more generally, you can look in my book. Where it is it? There it is. Look, uh, Digital Genesis. My latest book is all about the future of computing, robots and AI. Some of the stuff covered in this video and more. You might want to check that out as well. But now that's it for another video. If you enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.